Hello everybody and thank you once again for joining me. Today we are going to play through the ladder on Mono White Aggro. This is a competitive deck. It's a top tier deck. Uh, I am a budget player. I'm all free to play. But I did spend some wild cards on this one so I'll go over what that's going to take. My name is Justice. My handle is Arcantuna. Please remember to follow along for deck tech videos just like this one, event videos, tips and tricks for all the free-to-play stuff. I try and cover it all, especially from the free-to-play perspective. Uh, I think it's important to me to uh, make all the wisest wild card plays I possibly can. So uh, this deck is is pricey. There's uh, You do get the Conclave Tribunals for free, but other than that, every card in here is a wild card. Um, and because of that, it's, uh, this is not a budget version at all. So we start with four Dauntless Bodyguards, a one casting 2-1 from the Dominaria set. It's an uncommon. It does take four of them. And so when it enters the battlefield, you can choose another creature, and then you can sacrifice Dauntless Bodyguard, and that creature gets indestructible until the end of the turn. It's a nice way to protect your big creatures through, like, board wipes uh, or, you know, Gates Ablaze sometimes comes in there. Kaya's Wrath, Cleansing Nova, stuff like that. Two Healer's Hawks. It's a one-casting, one-to-one flying and lifelink. There's an argument here that these are sort of interchangeable. You could go four and two, four Healer's Hawks and two Bodyguards. I could see that also being just just as good in theory, so uh, you could do either way. Uh, four Legions Landing. You don't want four of these at once. You only want, you know, one, maybe two, because it's a Legendary Enchantment and then a Legendary Land. But for one white, when it comes into play, it creates a 1-1 one, one white vampire creature token with lifelink. And when you attack with three or more creatures, you can transform it. Now when it's transformed, it taps for a white mana. Or for two and a white, you can tap it and create a 1-1 one, one creature token with lifelink. It's pretty cool. And it takes four of those, and those are rare. And those You don't get any with the set at all. So none of these are going to come in your initial initial kits. Four Sky Marcher Aspirants, a one casting 2-1. If you have the City's Blessing, it does get flying. So it's one casting two on the flying if you've ever had the City's Blessing. And now to Ascend, if you control ten or more permanents at any point, you get the City's Blessing for the rest of the game. So that's all it takes. You can lose them and still have the City's Blessing. But again, none of those are going to come with the set. That's four uncommons. Four Snubhorn Sentries. It is a one casting zero three with Ascend. So as long as you have the City's Blessing, it gets plus three plus zero. Becomes a three three. Or if there's any other, you know, anthems in play, it gets it's bigger and bigger. For one mana, it's not bad. And that's a common, so that's one of the cheaper cards to make. Four Adanto Vanguards, two casting 1-1, one, one, as long as it attacks, it gets plus 2, plus 0. And you can pay four life, and it gets indestructible until end of turn. Be careful with that. Sometimes if you pay four life too often, you end up dying, and that's that's it. You, you lose because you kept your Adanto Vanguard alive. Four Benelish Marshals, a three casting, three three, well, three white, and but in this deck it's mono white, so it's no big deal. Other creatures you control get plus one plus one. Four Histories of Benalia, one and two white. The first two ticks of the saga creates a two two white knight creature token with vigilance, and then on the third tick, knights you control get plus two plus one. Uh, the only other knights in the deck are Dauntless Bodyguard and Benelish Marshal, so they also get plus two plus one if they're in play. I run three Unbreakable Formations and three Venerated Luxodons. You could sub out Unbreakable Formation for, um, I guess, I mean, even Charge might work. There's another one that the guys are using. I prefer Unbreakable Formation, but really anything that gives your creatures plus one, plus one. I'm looking for that card now. It's a two drop, two casting card. And I forget what it's called that they're going with. I, I don't know that I have any. Not adjust a car's portal. I don't think I have them. Oh, Pride of Conquerors. There it is. Yeah, so they're using Pride of Conquerors in place of Unbreakable Formation. You could easily probably put in Charge, or if you have something else. You know, I, I don't know. I like Unbreakable Formation a lot. To me, this is the better option. For three mana, creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Okay. At instant speed, if they do a board clear, you could save this and use it defensively if you have the mana. Or if you cast it during your main phase, you put a plus one, plus one counter on uh, on, on in each uh, creature you control. Or creatures you control get indestructible, and then you put a plus one, plus one counter on them, 
and they gain vigilance until the end of the turn. It's so awesome. Um, especially if you have like four creatures out and you have enough to do unbreakable formation attack and then venerated lux it on it works out really well <clears throat> and none of these come with the the initial set either four conclave tribunals all four of these will come with your set so that's four uncommons you don't have to spend but again at this point this is a top tier deck and it will cost you a lot of wild cards and i'm only running three venerated lux it on it's a rare um there's in history banalia's mythic you do get one history banalia in one of the starter decks so you will need three mythic wild cards for this guy and venerated luxadon is four and a white convokes so you can tap five creatures to cast it and when it enters the battlefield you can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature that convoked it i think this is a slower anthem it takes a whole turn before you can feel the effects whereas unbreakable formation is instant and cool it's just cool i like it um, but it's working pretty well. This is the deck I'm going to use to climb the ladder the rest of this month. So we'll see how we do it. And 20 planes, of course. Good old, good old 20 lands. And I think I'm in. I've used it to get out of the gold tier finally. So I'm in platinum tier 4. So here we go. We'll do some ranked play and we'll see how we do. see what we're up against here. This deck does pretty well against most deck types, although it can be susceptible to control if we get a slow start. This looks like every bit as fast to start as I could hope for. So we'll turn one Healer's Hawk, and so that way we can do, we can start swinging for one right away, rather than a, like, Dauntless Bodyguard on turn one, because I really want the effect of the, uh, the indestructible protection. So on turn two, We'll do, okay, so mirror match, terrific. In turn two, we'll do another, watch this, another healer's hawk and a bodyguard on this healer's hawk and hopefully our opponent blocks. He might block thinking I'm gonna sacrifice my bodyguard, but I'm not gonna. And knowing what I have in my hand here, I think it's a safe play to block his healer's hawk. I've seen some pretty funny plays with this deck and my opponent's keeping me from flipping uh, Legion's Landing. That's pretty funny, too. It's pretty pop This is going to be a pretty popular deck. It's it's fairly easy to make and easy to play. And uh, games are over kind of quickly. I like a Johnny's Pride Mate there. That makes me happier. Let's see. He's going to turn his Pride Mate into a 3-3. So I don't want him to keep pumping his Pride Mate. So I may as well get in the way of that now. Otherwise, he can attack me for one lifelink every turn, and his pride mate gets up to a 4-4. Four, four. The only answer we have for pride mate is Conclave Tribunal, so hopefully we can get one pretty quickly. And we'll just hopefully put on some pressure, see if we can't draw into an anthem here pretty soon. There's also no card draw in this deck. I'm not real sure why not. just doesn't call for it in all of the... Uh, top level deck list. I've done, I've done a few tests on this myself and honestly, I don't know why there's no card draw. There's no, um, seems like, uh, Fencing Tutor, what's his name, would be a good option. Where it's, uh, anytime you cast a creature with a power two or less, you can pay mana to draw a card. I think that would be a good option. We will bodyguard our Sky Marcher. And then we'll bodyguard our bodyguard. I could save these bodyguards for a bigger creature. Like a Benelish Marshal. And that puts me at 9 permanence. So next turn, if he doesn't kill my Sky Marcher, I will have two flyers to get in the way of the business here. I should have attacked with a Danto also. With lifelink, there's no harm in me, you know, spending that four life, at least right now. Depending on what our opponent has, he is running blue. So this could be an interesting version of the deck, perhaps a little bit cheaper. No. That's no good. There goes the Tribunal. On um, probably the Healer's Hawk, right? Okay. And 
it's a land which doesn't doesn't let me ascend right now. Um, so why don't we attack with our Adonto? He's a three-one. He may block with his Adonto, in which case I will pay four life. Which this is a silly move on his part because he should have just taken the three. It's a the net result is cheaper unless he's got another plan here, but. After having gained all that life, I'm pretty confident in my in my abilities here to well, shucks. History of Benelli is not great. Would almost be worth sneaking like Aurelia in here or some angels. Okay, so this is gonna be interesting. There's the city's blessing, and we're gonna go ham. Here we go. He's tapped out. I don't think he's gonna pay for life again for his Adanto. The Adanto alone can't kill anybody. No matter who he blocks with Snubhorn, it dies. Uh, his knight doesn't have, the, uh, the token doesn't have first strike, so it dies. And he might be trying real hard to save a Johnny's pride mate. He, he may have, in his hand, he may have something pretty good. And he doesn't pay the four life this time, right? Or else he'd be too low in health. Mm -hmm. So he could, if he's got a, like a venerated Luxodon, he could play it. I still win, and that's what I mean by it's a very slow card. It takes a whole turn before you feel the effect. Or he could play, uh, he can't Cleansing Nova. He could Tribunal the Benelish Marshal, and that's gonna suck. I'm still looking pretty good with my Sky Marcher with a flying ability there. Oh boy. Not playing that land. So we're going to attack. These two. This is, he has to block my Adanto. So I'm making him pick. I don't think he picks the knight. He pick, He blocks with the knight. He renders history totally worthless. Okay, that's a great choice. I will take four, I'll go to 16, he loses the token, he takes two, he's now at three, okay. There's a whole lot of cards I could draw that will end the game for us. He doesn't have any knights in play, so that's... I might have blocked with Snubhorn myself. Those can be four fours, that's just fine. Bodyguard and the Marshal, that's also just fine, because it doesn't do anything for Conclave Tribunal. I don't think he risks an attack here, because that would end the game. Let's do it. He can't counter it. He could tribunal it. He's sitting on 14 damage here. And he he can't conclave tribunal and give his creatures another anthem this turn. So I think that was a safe play. I think. I don't know. Once again, this is such a slow a slow turn that and they all tap so now I'm kind of undefended but I am at 16 he's sitting on 14 damage here he could play another okay he could play another marshal that's okay and he could attack me for 18 if he swings in with everything I block his marshal down with my with my uh, Benelish marshal he might have a charge 612 which would be 16, yeah, he might have a charge, and that could do it. Oh, he doesn't do it. Okay. He doesn't have the charge. See what I mean? A one-casting charge would have... He would have won the game. So, some of this stuff is interchangeable and, and pretty situational. I wonder what he had blue in there for. Maybe he's running, like, Azorius Knight Arbiter, which is a 2-5, can't be blocked. Ooh, this is a terrible start. I've learned that not having a turn one play is terrible with this deck. So even if it's... I'll go down to five. 
Okay, this is a little bit better, even though it's one mana. Yep, good with that. We want to get Legion's Landing out. Now, if this is mono red and he's got two shocks, we just quit. We don't worry about it. I'm not gonna, not gonna fight with him. Not gonna sit here and like watch him do it. Okay, that was. Not good. To any player, any target. How funny! He can just kill both of my guys with one Footlight Fiend. That's pretty funny. I hadn't encountered this Footlight Fiend business yet. Definitely kill the Fireblade. I gotta think having any life link would help against Rakdos aggro. Maybe it doesn't. He's gonna activate Spectacle and he's gonna start cooking me. If he's got spawns of mayhem, I will be so impressed. No spawns of mayhem. Oh boy, this is tough. So I can block the Pyromancer with the Snubhorn. Still taking three. This isn't ideal. Oh, okay, there goes that idea. Yeah, got hosed on the draw here. I'm still sort of seeing if there's a reason to keep playing this game. He's this is three damage per turn. Well, now it's five damage per turn. At least it'll be over quickly. No land. Okay, it's a bodyguard. I don't hate that. See, he could sacrifice the fiend, do two damage to me, and then when the fiend dies, deal one damage to the bodyguard and still swing in for four. want to stop taking the damage. Okay, he's got another one. That's fine. I don't think we can deal with this, though. Yeah, two, three, four. That's five damage. Draws a card. Mm -mm. I could block one more turn. Nope. Game's over. So, got kind of hosed on the draw that game. And that happens... There's, that happens way too often, and then you start to think, how can this deck have... It's rated to have a 60% win ratio, according to MTG Arena Pro, but you know what? You go on win streaks, and then sometimes you get hosed. That is what we call life. Here we go, this is a little bit better. Much better. With any luck, we draw into some more one drops and can flip Legion's Landing. We really want this to flip so we can get the mana early ish. I do not think he blocks with his Pelt Collector, but if he's going to block with Pelt Collector, I will happily take it because I can play history. But I only have turn three now. This is a risky play. I'm going to attack because I want to keep the pressure on. His Pelt Collectors are 1-1s, one and I don't think he's going to block because he wants to save them. No, he is going to block. Okay, so he blocks down, and I think that affects him a lot more negatively than it affects me, I think. Because if I draw into a land, I'm in business. I'm going to go with another history. And now he goes off. Mm -hmm. Yep, he does. He wants to adapt his uh, growth chamber. If I draw into a land next... No, it doesn't matter. Uh, at the end of my next... So at the end of this turn... Check this out. 
there's the five creatures I need to to convoke Venerate Deluxedon. There they go. He's gonna save this mana to try and to try and adapt all tricky um, and kill one of my my knights. But I've got other plans for that. And they're vigilant. So there's my five creatures. Now we can kill one. Let's check this out. This is where Venerate looks on does kind of shine. I know I've... Like I'm on the fence about it. So we kill his growth chamber guardian. He's sitting at seven. We've got two ticks on the second history of Benalia. Legion's landing flipped. So here comes Dauntless Bodyguard. I could have done this one of two ways. Okay. And then we were going to drop Venerated Luxodon Convoked with all those creatures, and they would be so gigantic next turn. They're all knights. It is massive overrun. It's very hard to overcome that. But it doesn't always happen. So the odds of seeing that in your deck is, is not very high. Uh, it's cool when it does. It's really cool when it, when it goes off. Um, it's, it's quick. I have had some struggles with this deck against Mono Red. So I don't know what the answer to Mono Red would be. Depending on what you're seeing that day, it might be worth might be worth making a couple different decks. And then if you're seeing a lot of Mono Red, just switch decks to like uh, whatever's really effective against Mono Red. I guess control, maybe, but not uh, like a Nexus of Fate deck. Don't don't do that to people. Friends don't let friends play Nexus of Fate. I'm all about Demir control. I think Demir is the best control. Blue on black stuff. It's just not as competitive. You don't see it rated as high or with high as, as high a win rates as you do uh, this mono white. Or even like Boros colors with um, heroic reinforcements you splashed into there. Ends up being pretty good. All right, so what's first? The landing? The landing is first. Simic colors. Oh, and he had to mulligan down to six. Oh, sorry, dude. So what are we facing? Hopefully it's not a terrible deck that, that we don't like. And I think we try and save the bodyguard for the Benelash Marshal. So with any luck, on turn three, we can attack for three, flip Adonto, or get the Adonto the first fort, right? Flip Legion the landing. It flips, gives us four mana on turn three. Then we can Benelish Marshal and Dauntless Bodyguard and Venerated Luxodon on turn three. I think that's that's our, our goal play here. Of course, we might not get a chance to see it. Aw. Oh, there we go. White. Okay, so we need to land next turn to make this work. Healer's Hawk. Snubhorn Sentry. We'll go ahead and attack for one, because why not? Maybe he's got an opt, maybe he doesn't. That's okay. Now we're going to attack with Snubhorn to flip uh, Legion's Landing. Either way, we're going to attack to flip it. If we, if we have to attack before we flip... Well, such as life. Like if we don't draw into a land or something like that. Although we could... No, we want to flip it. We want to flip it. That'll give us three mana. We could drop a Danto Vanguard. We should... It should be Benelish Marshal. If we don't draw into a land. If we draw into a land, then we will apply some serious hurt with Benelish Marshal. Attack, flip, Dauntless Bodyguard on the Benelish Marshal. And then the next turn we can... Lux it on. Oh, boy. We didn't get it. So we for sure attack. Here we go. This guy flips. Now we can Benelish Marshal. So we did lose three damage on that turn because of lands. He's got two white sources, so he could settle the wreckage. So, yeah, I think we... I 
think we better Dauntless or Benelish Marshall. Or Dauntless eats a counter spell. He doesn't. And then we'll attack with not... We'll play around Settle the Wreckage by not attacking with Benelish Marshall. Maybe he doesn't have one. I've noticed that a lot of people aren't running it anymore. And I'm going to hang on to my Adanto Vanguards. Uh, there's no reason to, to go crazy casting everything just yet. Tafiri, that's interesting. He draws a card. If he untaps a green source, I'm going to assume he's got a fog in there. Okay. Pressure's on. So I'm positive he's running uh, Cleansing Nova. This is 11 damage here. I'm going to play my Aspirant, Sky Marcher, just to trigger the, uh, the City's Blessing when it, when it comes time, right? One more land will do it. Or, or a Luxodon will do it. He's got a white and a green, so let's, let's swing in for some damage. I don't like him having a Tefiri. He's got a root, a root canal. Whatever it's called, root snare. Without a doubt, he's got one. I don't think he would make this play. I'm getting too old for this. Well, that surprised me. It sure did. Maybe he doesn't have it. Okay. No time for a break. What's he looking for? He So he must be looking for Wilderness Reclamation? Okay, so there's that. And then... And then what are we looking for? Wait a second. Okay. Okay, Wilderness Reclamation goes first. I'm going to tap my white mana sources. Because I think he will have to untap my lands with Tefiri. I think. Are you serious? He's got it already? Oh, sakes. This is just too much. That's right, you can cast a se seven casting card with six mana if you've got Wilderness Reclamation in play. And the culprit here is not Wilderness Reclamation. It is in fact Nexus of Fate. It recycles itself back into your deck and you get an extra turn. It is absurd. Growth Spiral. He draws a card. If he's got another one, which he must or else he would have quit by now. He untaps, he gets his Nexus of Fate. Oh, I get a turn. No, it doesn't, doesn't matter though, does it? Because, we'll go, go to Fury with one, just in case he prevents damage to himself. And we will, I want to more than do the job, because I've seen before where they can remove one or two creatures by accident. Okay, we'll try it. We'll try it this way. Settle the wreckage. Yeah. We will definitely take that action. I want to get the lands out of my deck. Four. See what we got going on. Hurry. Search for lovely. There it is. 
He's got 40 cards in his deck. Maybe he doesn't have the the unlimited business happening right now. Which would be nice. Is that five loyalty? Hopefully he's out. He's got a lot of cards to dig through still to find another Nexus of Fate. So I'm hoping maybe he doesn't have one. He probably does. Or he's got to settle. It's a Dawn of Hope so he can create a bunch of creatures. And at least make some blockers that'll get in the way of my creatures attacking, which is not, not ideal. Hmm. Hydroid Crisis, this is just infuriating. Untaps. We'll make a token of our own. And if we draw into a Conclave Tribunal, what do we choose? I mean, Wilderness Reclamation or Tefiri? Or Hydroid Crisis? I would go with the Hydroid Crisis. Um, but I'm just going to draw. Whatever card I draw is fine, and then I'm going to get out of this game. Uh, staying in this game for two hours is not how you climb the ladder. It's not going to work. So he's out of, out of tricks, which is neat. But we don't get it, so there's really no point in, in carrying on, right? Like, I can't... I can't really sneak in for enough damage. I attack, he blocks my Benelish Marshal, or I attack for just two. Um, but we all kind of know how this game's gonna go, so... Maybe we will stay. Maybe I won't give up just yet. I'm gonna have to go after Tefiri. Just to buy myself some potentially some extra time. And I saw the timer ticking away. Yeah, so he's gonna make two tokens. Yeah. Alright. He could I mean he could just take all this and then if he's got enough. What he should do is block one, get the life gain, then draw with Dawn of Hope. Ah, oh, he still could. He's got enough mana for it, so now he can block, block them both, get the life gain, draw one card. Gang blocks, yeah. That puts him at 8, and we are trying to do more damage. Hydroid Crisis saves him. Friggin' jellyfishes. Alright. Well, not quite fast enough. Got him down to 3, but that's not good enough. And I'm virtually positive he is on the Nexus of Fate train, and we are not going to get another turn. Close. Oh, how satisfying would that have been? Darn it. And this is where, like, Mono Blue Tempo comes in pretty handy because you could use Syncopate and then counter the Nexus of Fate and exile it at the same time, which is which is the most satisfying way to rid yourself of Nexus of Fate. So he gains three life, draws cards, uses Dawn of Hope. I would I would definitely do that. Taps. He's at 11, so I can't do 11 damage anyway. He's tapping for mana. And he could just make a bunch of 1 1s at this point, use them as blockers, and then swing in for a 5 a turn. 
wait a bunch of turns. And, okay, so he's gonna draw and pretend to draw into a into a nexus of fate, right? Is that what we're looking at? Oh, he doesn't have one. If he had one, we'd see it by now. But all I've got is venerated luxodons, so I can't. I can't drop an anthem fast enough for my creatures. Now he's on the discard. I do get a turn. But he's back up to 14. Hmm. Oh boy. I'm gonna pay all mana for this. I don't wanna... Don't wanna tap any creatures in advance of the the attack. No doubt he counterspells this? I gotta assume he counterspells this. There's no way he lets this fly. Okay. He must have another settle. Oh boy. No, he just he's just gonna block. So he's gonna make two. One, two. He can make two tokens. It takes four or three. Four. Settle. Yeah, okay. Alright, you win. Well done, sir. There's no way we can come back from that without having enough creatures. So, a couple of games, a couple wins, a couple losses, and no progress in the ladder. Trust me, that is how it goes sometimes. Don't let it get to you. It's easy to get frustrated by it, but just keep just keep that train going on those tracks. Steady like a freight train, smooth like a razor blade. Because games will go your way. Some games will not go your way. Nobody wins 100% of the time. Hmm. We are on the draw. Two tribunals in hand. A bodyguard and a vanguard. Mm, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang on to this. And I like Snubhorn Sentry first instead of Bodyguard first because I like the Bodyguard's protection ability. So if anything does come up, I play it first instead. This is Selesnya, hopefully, and not something silly like a Walker deck. Hmm. This would be terrible if he starts exploring right away. Like if he drops a Jade Light Ranger, this could get this could get old. I don't mind baffling end. For for him, not for me. But, you know, he's got baffling end, so if that leaves the play, I get a 3-3 dinosaur creature token, but that's all I get. Oh, this is already too slow of a start. I don't think this is going to be a win. This deck does turn out to be fairly weak against Golgari as well. So, you know, I'm going to try on both of his walkers. And that'll give me nine permanents in play next turn, unless I draw into a one-drop. If I draw into even like a healer's hawk or something... That would give me 10th, the 10th turn, or Legion's Landing. There we go. So I've got this out. And there's the City's Blessing. Cool. And then next turn, I can flip Legion's Landing, and then maybe... Do something. There's the Jade Light Ranger. Okay, so he's going to gain six health back. That's no good. This is also hard for us to overcome with this deck. Um, I just know that sometimes it's easier just to quit and then carry on, try and get some wins against better matchups than life gain. Typically, we match up pretty good against control, too, but 
and, you know, sometimes it doesn't doesn't always work out to be that way. Yep. And they're coming in hot. I want to flip Legion's Landing. Go ahead. See what what he comes up with. He's was a little shy on man another Jade Light Ranger. Okay, we're not going to do this game either. He is well. I'll play it out. I'll play it out just to just to show you guys how this deck is susceptible to this kind of a matchup where where now he's back up to 26 and his Walker is going to get huge. It's the one I couldn't tribunal. I'm really not afraid of his Jade Light Rangers. And I'm really not too afraid of his Walker attacking. Although it is difficult to overcome that much life gain. So he's already gained something like 12 health, uh, you know, he, he should be in the low teens, but he's at 25 instead. It's going to take me forever to whittle that away. That is game. We cannot overcome a Lyra Dawnbringer. I thought about putting a Lyra Dawnbringer in this deck. Um, honestly, I don't know why there isn't one. I just haven't done it yet. But the idea is to win sooner than this. And it just doesn't happen, so like he's got too much going on. This is this was a great start against us. Um, if he had started with smaller creatures, we'd be and now we're losing. We're losing rank. This happens. It happens to me all the time. I was you bounce between certain tiers and then you go, man, I've been playing for 45 minutes and haven't got anywhere. It's part of the game. Some days you go down, some days you go up, but you keep fighting through it and you will get your rating up there. Uh, especially with with, in theory, this deck is supposed to be, like, the number one mono-white aggro deck right now. In theory. And we're on the draw yet again. Also, being on the draw puts you at an instant disadvantage. Uh, instantly, you're at a disadvantage. So if he starts... If he starts shocking me down, this would this could be bad. If not, this could be very good. So we'll have a third turn Luxodon with four creatures in play. Or a third turn Luxodon with five creatures in play. Rhythm of the Wild. This is risky. He doesn't attack. He doesn't want to risk. He doesn't want to risk his uh, his Otepic Hunter. Oh, now what do we do? I say we definitely go Benelish Marshall first, and then we attack with everybody. He takes all eight because he is about to smack me for a bunch. So all of he could tap his. Oh, Tepic Hunt Mass. Okay, no, okay, that's game. This is what, ideally, even if we got this draw last game, he, our opponent in that game could have just blocked the Wildgrowth Walkers. So, anything with like a three toughness early, it's kind of tough to deal with with this deck. That's why I would like to do... The only problem is, if we put in Resplendent Angels, three casting, three three with flying, they are very susceptible to... Um, like, even just, like, Lightning Strike and Skewer the Critics and stuff. So, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of a lot of that floating around. This is a terrific hand, especially for, uh, if our opponent's not playing red. Uh, we'll go Landing first, and then next turn we'll go Sky Marcher and Healer's Hawk. And then the turn after, two Snubhorns or History Banalia, depending on what I'll search for. Oh, boy. Sky Marcher, Hawk, one damage coming in with that token. Ha! So 
So yeah, even if we don't draw a land, I could do double Snubhorn and then Venerated Luxodon. Alright, let's see where we're at here. So we'll do... Oh, he's got blue mana up. Is he going to counterspell something? That's okay. Perfect. All right, so check this out. Oh, no, but I have to attack. So I can't convoke them. Oh, that's a little silly. That's my eighth permanent. Oh, yep. So in either case, I could play History of Benalia, which would give me the city's blessing, and I could squeeze in attacks for both... Snowborns will be six... Hmm, that's tricky. That's tricky. He's only got one white mana. So I'm not entirely terrified of a, of a board clear. We'll go history. This gets countered for sure, right? I gotta think this is this is a counter spell waiting to happen. And we will just convoke our Luxodon, give everybody a counter, and let our opponent stare at this for a minute. Although, I don't know how scary this is to him if he's got something beefy in there. If he's got uh, a Cleansing Nova, we're dead. If he's got, he doesn't have Kaya's Wrath, we're alive. He can't settle the wreckage without two white, we're alive. I don't see mana coming down. Hmm. It's not ideal because he untaps with Wilderness Reclamation. And we gotta come after him pretty hard because he is at 17 and this could be the last turn that we get. Hopefully he doesn't have it and concedes and takes away... Oh, he's got a Hydroid Crisis. 2-2. Two -two. Untaps. Okay, now did he do this to make me think he doesn't have a Settle or did he just draw a Settle? Is he running Settle? So he blocks a 4-4 four, four and takes 15. Hmm. Well, let's just swing in with everybody, see if we pay for it. We can't let this game go on too many turns anyway. If he's got to settle, he's got to settle and we die. Um, so we can't always play around it. If he doesn't have a settle and we attack like he does, then that buys him the time he needs to get into his stupid his stupid nexuses of fates, and I do not want to let that happen. Two. He's at two. Normally I don't play that land, but I don't want to bother. Here we go. So he searches. He transforms. He uses search for as Cant of the Sunken Ruin, looks at the top four, grabs a Nexus of Fate. Okay. That's not awful. But now he does Growth Spiral. And then he can't cast it. Or did he did he have one in his hand anyway? Oh my goodness sakes. This card can't go away fast enough. This is the most absurd. It is so ridiculous. Did he forget to cast it? No, he's... he did. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here for just a moment. Oh. 
That was rewarding. That was worth it. couple more. I think we're making some progress on the rating. I'd like to try and get up a pip. If I do, if I can climb one tier every couple days, I'll be on pace to hopefully put myself in a position to get mythic, maybe. Um, but I, I don't know. Ooh, what are we doing here? First turn, second turn Vanguard. Legion's Landing is down. We got our Vampire token. I doubt he wastes a shock on the token. I have seen uh, guys, you know, whatever. I don't want to call anybody names, but I have seen them play shocks and little, like, sacrifice their firebrands to do one damage to my tokens just to prevent me from flipping Legion's Landing. It has been a major pain. I hope that doesn't happen here because I will be on pace to have three creatures. And I'm going to do this a little early. I should save my bodyguard for Benelish Marshal, but I want to get my, my Legion's Landing flipped. And he's got a shock in his hand. I can tell by the way it holds priority. Might be a Lightning Bolt. Okay, so we will protect the Vampire Token. So if I, even if I saved him for my Benelish Marshal, he's still a target for, for Zappy Doos. Light up the stage, full retail for that. That's terrific for us. This isn't great, so he's got a Pyromancer and then a Wizard's Lightning, but whatever. Yeah, we'll do a Vanguard. Because I can pay the life and my Vanguard will live. Should he make him a shock target or something, that's actually pretty powerful. Pretty powerful dude. I don't think he goes Wizard's Lightning to a creature. I think he goes Wizard's Lightning to my face area. Yeah. But then I'm gonna have a Benelish Marshal down. Steelers. Okay. Hey, that's that's all right. See, we could have Luxadon right there with all four of these guys, and that prob- Okay, so he blocks, he wants me to take four, which I will not do. We will just sacrifice our Adonto. And we're gonna hope he doesn't have three damage to my Benelish Marshal in that hand. He does, he's got it, who are we kidding? But that's alright, because if we can get to this point in this game we are in business okay so check this out I've got five mana don't have enough for unbreakable formation but I can start working on it this way so I can make tokens which can convoke for uh, venerated Luxodon. so next turn I'll have the mana and creatures anyway for an unbreakable frenzy cool I'm cool with that I hope Cool. This, this works. Check this out. I was hoping that we would get a chance to see this. This is why I like Unbreakable Formation. This is one of my favorite Anthem cards that exists right now. So, no history. We'll do Unbreakable Formation in the main phase. They're also indestructible and they've got Vigilance. Then we attack. Okay, so... I'm gonna gain 4 health against Mono Red, which sucks. He thinks he's gonna die. He's not. They're indestructible. Let's see if he wants to quit. No? Now we do the Venerated Luxodon. Now we tap him for the mana, and they also get another counter. Let's see if that Frenzy pays off for him. I really hope it doesn't. Okay, there's two for the Pyromancer. This 
skewers on the bodyguard. That's okay. He goes bye bye. Lightning strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now he blocks and he thinks he lives. I'm gonna tribunal the pyromancer though. Mm hmm. And we'll be swinging in for seven. So that should be lethal. We should be able to, to, to finish the game in one more attack here. He shocks him just for good minute. Oh. <laughs> All right. And one more win. So see, we got off to kind of a rough start there. Um, and now this is at the point where I'm climbing the ladder pretty good. The next, if I win this game, I'm done for the night. No matter what happens, I, I'm done. If I lose, I'm also done. So I don't want to go on a losing streak and then feel like I've got nowhere. That's something that I watch out for. So it's just how I do it, how I climb the ladder. I don't want to get stuck and feel like I'm just spinning my wheels and not really getting anywhere. It happens. Oh, and I go first. Oh, this is this could be terrific. Okay. Let's see what we got. Sky Marcher goes down. Please be the world's slowest blue deck. No, his counter spells. Green, like a slow green. Hopefully he's just got forests and Galta and he just waits 12 turns to play anything. I don't want to think too hard. Although he's this looks like platinum tier one to me. So he's probably he's probably good at this. This is a slow, a slow ramp situation here. This is gonna be kind of nice though. On turn, turn four, I could unbreakable formation, give all of these creatures a counter, and then the next turn, turn five, would be the saga tick number three of history of Benalia, and all my knights. Although there will only be two. Oh boy, this could suck. Thought erasure. Here it comes. Cry of the Carnarium will kill Ladonto Vanguard. So be on the lookout for that. If they if they give him minus one, minus one, he dies. Okay, okay. That's not bad. I like history here. It comes down, it does more stuff later. I do like my Benelish Marshal, don't get me wrong. I just think that. If he resolves history now, it gives me a chance to uh, play play Benelish Marshall while he's spending mana to resolve his Ripinalia. What was this? Night Veil Predator? That's strong. What are we looking at? Counter spells here? So we should do Unbreakable. And then if he counters this and does a cry of the carnarium next turn, we're screwed. Moment of craving is gonna work, yes. But these two will survive counters now. He takes six. Awesome. And if this isn't an amazing turn for him, we're in pretty good shape to win. Ritual of Sud. Not at all terrific, no. Awful. Worst case scenario, in fact. Worst case scenario. I don't think he does a Ritual of Sud for just those two, though, if he's got another one. Though he will say, uh, what's he gonna do? The Eldest Reborn? Nightville Predator. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. I 
This deck is also highly susceptible to Ritual of Soot, as we saw, as well as the Eldest Reborn. The Eldest Reborn will tear us apart. I do something crazy here. I'm gonna Conclave Tribunal his search for Escanta while I can. I don't think he's gonna counter it. Okay, now here's the thing. If I attack, does... Oh, he's got a Dream Eater. Okay, that's okay. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I took care of this Surge 4 now, so now we can't... Although he could still... No, he just Surveils 4. Hmm. Nope, then he returns an online permanent. That's right. So any one of these will do. He probably chooses... The okay, the Adonto. At this point in the game is where I start asking myself, can we still win? The truth of the matter is I really don't know. Oh, and he counters him. Okay. That's fine. It's the predator that's tough. So it's got Death Touch and Hexproof. Hmm. He must have counter spells in there, yeah? I've only seen one. That's gotta be what these three cards are, is counter spells? Maybe it's another Dream Eater. I still can't touch the Predator. And then what does he pick? A tribunal? Yep, that's what I would do. And then the marshal or something? Yeah, that's smooth. Oh, he does the other... The other tribunal. Okay. Okay. Flips it. Nice. And then with any luck here... Well, no, he doesn't. I still think we're sunk. I don't think this is going to be a win. Oh, rats. I was hoping. Lots of strong removal. Got close though. Man. We were on like a fifth turn. Seriously, a fifth turn. We had a history out there, right? But Ritual of Soot has won the day. And I don't think we can come back from that. He's at seven, and I don't think I can do seven more damage to him at all. Yeah, okay. He got us.